So let's look at determination of income tax liabilities of individuals. We'll talk about partnership later on. So now we want to focus on individuals. So stay with me carefully here as we unpack all the principles that we need to understand. Basically, when we are dealing with the tax liability of the individual, we need to first look at a number of things in that case. The things we look at is that we could work from the bottom to the top. So tax is always charged on the chargeable income on the individual. This is what the tax rate will be, the graduated tax rate will be expressed on. But the chargeable income of individual is equal to the, asset, the total accessible income of that individual minus all personal reliefs. So yes, our tax rate is going to be applying on the uh, chargeable income. But then the chargeable income will be total accessible income minus personal reliefs. Now, when we say total accessible income, what exactly do we mean? Total accessible income simply means the total cash emolument plus benefits in kind or non-cash benefits. And we're gonna expand on these things in a moment. So the total cash emolument is equal to, sorry, total accessible income is equal to the total cash emolument plus the benefits in kind or non-cash benefits. We will get to, into that in a moment. Now, when we say total cash emolument, what exactly do we mean? Total cash emolument, It's simply going to be equal to the basic salary of the individual in question plus cash benefits received or allowances in cash. That is total cash benefits. That is total cash benefits. Now, this is the part of the lecture where we're going to be start to expanding the issues. Then the question we ask ourselves is, how do we get the <laughs> basic salary? <laughs> so basic salary is usually going to be given to us directly in the question. But sometimes the examiner will tell us that the person is on a salary scale. So for instance, uh, let me pull up an, an illustration. Name Limited, Name Limited, employed Coco Boy on a salary scale of, of 12,000 CDs minus 1,200 times 15,000 CDs. This is what I want you to focus on, the salary scale. So there are times when the basic salary will be given to you in the question. Other times you would have to calculate it yourself. What does that mean? So if you have this, this is what is referred to as the salary scale. Okay, the salary scale. So if you have this, what does that mean? This is what it means. 
when we have this salary scale, it means the minimum salary the person can take during the term of employment is 12,000 CDs. And the maximum salary the person can take during the term of employment is 15,000 Ghana cities. Stay with me carefully on that. What does that mean? So again, let's expand on it. What this salary scale means is that in the first year, the person takes a salary of 12,000. Then every year, the person's salary will be increased by 1,200 until the salary gets to 15,000 cities. And from there, the person will be taking that particular salary. So what does that mean? Get it. So in year one of the employment, the person takes the minimum salary of 12,000. I mean, that's the, that is the opening salary in year one. In year two, the person's salary will be increased by 1,200. So we're going to have 12,000 plus 1,200. And that's going to be what? 13,200. In year three, the person's salary will be increased by 1,200 again. So 1,200 by... 13,200 uh, plus 1,200. And that gives us 14,400. Then in year four, the person's salary will increase again. That is 14,400 plus 1,200. And that's going to be 16,400. Sorry, 16,600. I'm going to adjust the 15,000 because always it will just fit to the final figure. So let me say 16,600 here. So what does that mean? So it means the maximum salary is the 16,600. So in the fifth year, how much salary would the person take? 16,600. No more in incremental. In the sixth year, how much salary would the, salary would the person take? 16. 600. That is the idea about determination of the basic salary of individuals. Any question on the basic salary? Okay, we're good. So that is how we determine the basic salary. Then the second thing we ask ourselves is, okay, what are the cash benefits that the individual is likely to be receiving? What are the cash benefits that the individual is likely to be receiving? So let's look at benefits, cash benefits or allowances. When it comes to the cash benefits or allowances that a person can get, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. We could have risks allowance. We could have meal allowance. We could have refund of medical expenses. We could have issues relation to bonus. We could have issues about overtime. But stay with me carefully here because there is something you must know about bonus. Stay with me carefully here. There is something you must know about overtime because you don't just get up and bring these guys to the scene. Otherwise, you'll be committing a sin. If you bring them to the scene, you'll be committing a sin. So you got to be careful about the principles surrounding them. So there could be risk allowance. There could be meal allowance. There could be a uh, refund of uh, medical expenses coming in and others. So let's pick these one after the other and talk about them real quick. Sometimes the risk allowance will directly be stated in the question. 
how it should be computed. The examiner could say, uh, Rick's allowance is 5% of basic salary. So if he says that, boom, just take 5% of basic salary and you are gone, that is all. Male allowance, it could be directly stated in the question. Medical refund, it could be directly stated in the question. But you gotta be careful here. If the medical uh, thing, it's available for everybody in the, uh, uh, how do we call it? In the organization, then it shall not be included in the determination of the chargeable income of the individual. In other words, this is what we mean. When it comes to benefits, we have what we call discriminatory benefits and then non-discriminatory benefits. I'm gonna drop a bomb here, make sure you catch it. When we say a benefit is discriminative, it means that benefit is only available to a selected few or individuals within the organization. That is discriminatory. When we say non-discriminatory, it means these benefits are available to all employees within the organization. Stay with me carefully here. If the benefit is available to all employees within the organization, it shall not be included in the determination of the chargeable income of the individual. Shall not be included in the determination of the chargeable income of the individual. because it's available for everybody. It's available for everybody. It's not that like we, we corner you somewhere and we give it to you at the back. Nah, like everybody has it. You don't have to meet any criteria before you get it. But this is the catch. Where it is discriminatory, it is available to the CFO, the, CF, uh, the COO, the CMO, and all the COOs, then it shall, so this is not included, but this shall be included. So this shall be included in the chargeable income of the individual. That's the idea. That's about benefits. Here is the catch. In the exam hall, the examiner may be quiet about a certain benefit. In other words, there could be a benefit in the question. You may not be able to tell, like meal allowance. You may not be able to tell whether it is available to everybody or it is exclusive to only some people in the organization. In such cases, whichever treatment you choose is acceptable. All you must do is state the assumption you used in the treatment of the benefits. 